So I got into a conversation with a viewer and um, it ended up being, you know, something that kind of triggered an idea and, and I kind of figured, you know what, it would make an interesting episode and a pertinent episode because of what's coming up soon. Now that of course is the Mercury Star Runner. Chances are, fingers crossed, we're going to see that with the uh, Aerospace Expo or Anniversary Sale patch, but you know. We don't know until we know with Star Citizen, so we'll have to wait and see. But why do I still own this ship? If I own a Mercury Star Runner, why do I still own the Herald? Why is this still something that's in my hangar? I've actually, I've owned this ship since 2014. It's one of those ships that has just never gone away. I've kept it ever since the original concept sale. And six years later, without a thing to do in it, you'd think I probably would have used it as a, an LTI token and CCU'd into something more interesting, like the Mercury Star Runner. But that's not really the case. I think that the best way to articulate this is to kind of look at mining. When you look at mining, whether you're using a hand tool, whether you're using a rock, or I keep wanting to say pioneer, but prospector, or a mole, each one has its own niche. Each one has its own area. Broadly speaking, they're all mining, right? But each one kind of has its own little focus. And I think that that is what is going to materialize with the advent of hacking and data running. Both ships are gonna be data runners. I think that obviously it's safe to say that the Mercury Star Runner is going to have greater capacity to carry data, you know, more data that you'll be able to take along with you. And there'll, there'll certainly be certain bonuses along with that. But with the Herald, I feel that CIG is going to lean into E-War pretty heavily with this ship. Now, when some people say E-War, they think distortion weapons or they think EMPs. That's not what E-War is. Well, EMP on a, on a large, large scale could be, but... Generally, it's radar jamming, you know, it's, you know, suppression of enemy sensors, that sort of thing, creating a lot of interference. That is what E-War traditionally is. Now, of course, the Herald comes with some very powerful transmitters attached to it. You can't see them right now because they've been uh, deactivated on the ship. It used to be that you could push a button in a little computer room and they would pop, 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 pop open and then you could close them down now they've kind of taken that capability away from us right now but hopefully at some point in the future when they get around to it it'll return the herald for me is is pretty unique it has a fairly low em signature for a ship of its size though the thermal signature is kind of up there though i do suspect that you could do quite a lot to kind of drill that down i think that when you're talking about, say, running bulk amounts of data for like a criminal syndicate or even a legitimate enterprise, I think that the Mercury Star Runner is going to be your go-to. But when you need the ability to move data, but also the ability to hack, suppress sensors, maybe remotely hack into a satellite, I think that the Herald is going to be the go-to ship for that. Now, in the past, I've made a few videos and I've kind of looked at what already exists in hacking. I've talked about, oh, you know, you could make it so the Herald can make its own chips or we can remotely hack satellites and trying to find the least labor intensive way for CIG to kind of implement hacking or even data running. I mean, realistically, it just has to be an invisible cargo bay that only a certain type of cargo can go in and you could just open up data running. But... You know, CIG, I don't think they're going to ever take that route or take that advice. What they're going to do is they're going to think of something that's systemic, bespoke, unnecessarily complex, and a little bit over the top to begin with. And that's where they're going to kind of come from for data running and hacking. I think that the basic hacking that we have right now is a product of necessity. You know, we need a way to hack down Crimestat. But what CIG wants to do is nothing that they can implement over, you know, over the short term. It's something that they they want to lean into, obviously, and they want to really push out a product that they're really, you know, that they're that they hope is going to work. 
And that's probably why we won't see hacking or data running for quite some time. They're going to lean into it and they're going to do something kind of nutty with it, as they always do. I don't really believe that the, that the arrival of the Mercury Star Runner is going to do anything to kind of accelerate that pace because the Mercury Star Runner, being that it's also a cargo ship, kind of leaves CIG the excuse like, oh, well, you know, your ship does something and you can smuggle with it. So there you go. You know, have fun running loads of booze or drugs or whatever into Grim Hex. Though the drug market could use a little bit of a tweak for that. But that is probably going to be, you know, CIG's kind of fallback position. They're going to say, yep, you know what? MSR is good enough for now. We'll come back to it. We'll finish it later. But for right now, it's not a priority. With the Herald... Unfortunately, the Herald has been around for six years, right? The original sale was 2014. And in fact, this is the, roughly speaking, this is just past the sixth anniversary of the original sale of the Herald. And six years on, the ship doesn't do anything. You know, it's kind of a glorified shuttlecraft. I mean, there's one or two missions that you can complete with it, but generally, it's not really good for anything in Star Citizen. And moreover, if anyone's going out and saying, hey, I want to get into the Star Citizen thing, what's a good ship? If they're doing their research when they're spending their money, which they should, they're going to know that the Herald is a dead ship. It doesn't do anything. It's not It's not going to be a top dog fighter. You know, it's not going to be an excellent mission runner because it can't hold cargo. So it's it's a dead ship i mean what was it at the last sale i think it went up and then it went down in price i think the last time we saw it, it was about 85 bucks so 85 dollars for more or less nothing right a non-functional entity in the game or largely non-functional much like you know the reclaimer the re well you can use the reclaimer to haul cargo yeah but would you really want to especially with the way you know it works at the landing sites on planets now the only place you can really take it in and out from with any amount of enjoyability is grim hex so it's you can't run cargo from grim hex to grim hex so that's also very very dead at the moment but coming back to the herald i mean it's been dead for so long that no one's going to buy this ship and so there's going to be no further pressure to kind of say hey you know what we should get this hacking thing done we should get this data running thing done i just the pressure is not there i mean cig clearly you know when they're looking at what they want to develop they look at things like the rock and they say, okay, we got to get mining and tractor beams in for the rock. Whereas other ships have needed tractor beams for a long time, but not really a priority. Now we're getting hand tractor beams, but I just, you know, I don't think that there's anything out there that's really going to push CIG into, you know, kind of, you know, stomping ahead with this. It's like, uh, the Genesis Starliner. It's like the uh, Banu Merchantman, sadly. So many people have just, I guess, kind of CCU'd out of those ships that CIG maybe just doesn't feel that they need to kind of push ahead on those lines. You know, Genesis Starliner, I think, is almost as old as the Herald. I think the Genesis Starliner came in March of 2015. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. But... You know, we never hear a peep about that ship. And the only time we hear about the Banu Merchantman is when someone at CIG is like, yeah, we know, we know. There's a dedicated fan following out there, but I just, unfortunately, I'm, I'm not sure if it's big enough for them to really kind of, you know, to really kind of kick their asses into high gear on that ship. So for me, really, I mean, still owning the Herald at this point, yeah, there is the possibility that I might kind of double over on capabilities, but I'm still, you know, I'm still kind of holding out that or holding to the belief that there are going to be certain things that the Herald is better at than the Mercury Star Runner, especially when it comes to maybe mischievous things. As for, 
you know, getting rid of the Mercury Star Runner. No, I, I kind of want to see what you can do with that ship. You know, I don't think I'm ever really going to get rid of that. It's a, it's a cool looking ship. One of the few ships that I look at and I go like, that is a really cool design. Though it's, it did seem to get a little bit thicker um, between the original concept art and the live production model. But I think that's the implementation of all those little crawl spaces and probably CIG kind of smacking themselves in the head and going, oh my God, and now all these other ships don't have them. People are going to be asking questions, but I think that's what did that. But yeah, we'll see what happens with smuggling. When, when smuggling gets more in depth and we're able to move larger cargoes than just like one crate from here to there and things like that, I think the value of the Mercury Star Runner could really, could really explode in the eyes of the community. If, you know, once again, if the missions are built right. So for me, that's kind of what, how I still have a Herald and I still have a Mercury Star Runner. That's kind of what I see shaping up in the future. I don't think we're going to get hacking or data running anytime soon. I think CIG's got bigger fish to fry. And they're probably going to iterate on mining at least two more times before they even consider data running. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, medical gameplay is another big one. There's a lot of stuff on that list. And I just don't think that data running for a dead ship and a ship that can also haul cargo is a priority. Thank you, thank you for watching. So, 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 so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development, please follow us, please follow us, please follow us on our social media channels. See you soon.